Okay, so today in the workshop we've got this rather beautiful 2014 Jaguar. So this is a three litre supercharged model. And this is typical of faults that we see on a regular basis. This has actually come up with um, an O2, what is it Dave, left bank sensor? Uh, bank one, sensor one, uh, O2 sensor, reference voltage, open circuit or, um, or um, yeah, shot to ground. So actually we've been looking into it further and this is the difference when you use an OE tool. So we're actually using uh, Jaguar Land Rover SDD because of the, the year of the vehicle, because it's 2014, this is not yet on top, it's cloud. And we've gone through it all, we've got quite a number of DTCs on the screen here, as you can see. Some are historic faults, um, and some are obviously uh, current faults. You see the O2 sensor ones on there. Now the difference is with this is actually we've looked through it a bit further, and what have you found, Dave? So what we've found with this particular vehicle is not only... Um, the first instance, of course, for most workshops would be, it says O2 sensor, so the common thing what we'd see is somebody just replacing the O2 sensors. However, when we look a little bit deeper into the software and use our recommendations option, we find in here that part of the recommendations after doing tests is to look at a technical service bulletin. Now the technical service bulletin, quite clearly as you can see, refers to customer situation with regards to the O2 sensors. So the cause is post catalyst sensor software error. So not only are there parts listed for this particular vehicle that need replacement, but also as well, and in a really important part of this procedure is to perform a software update. So we've spoken to customer about this and customer actually knew about this already. And he mentioned to us and he actually said some of it was that these cars when they came off the line had some very interesting pops and bangs to obviously enhance the customer's experience. And actually, uh, what it potentially does is cause some catalyst damage in these OT sensor errors. So we're going to update the software now and then see how we get on. So before we carry out the action of the software update on the engine ECU, just thought we'd just point out within the SDD software how and where to perform the software update from. Uh, as you can see from here, the recommendations after the DTCs, there is the option in there to configure the existing module powertrain. However, if you find that it's not in your highly recommended tabs, then the second option would be you would read the documentation within the recommendations. This would then unhide this extras tab. Within the extras tab, you will then find the exact same function of configure existing powertrain control module. So, so basically you're just going to hit configure existing module now, you're just going to run that. We're just going to hit the run function over here and that will start the process off. And this will take, we'll, I've got to go and flip the ignition on off, we'll go through this and we'll come back and see if it's all worked. So, so the customer's been out for test run in the vehicle. Um, the uh, mill lights come back on, but we have basically the same fault. So the oxygen sensor circuit, short circuit to bank one is still present. Um, obviously the software update didn't make a lot of difference to that, which is fine. But you've obviously got to try the software update first before you do anything else. So Dave's just going to talk you through, he's going to go through the next procedure in this. So it's not over yet. So Dave. Yeah, so next steps in our diagnostic process would now be, uh, again, we've, we've cleared the fault codes down with the customers taking the vehicle for a drive. The warning light is still on the vehicle. So now we've re-scanned the vehicle for faults and we can see now that some of those fault codes have reappeared. Um, but really importantly, what we've got now is we've got these little um, fault codes here with these percentage relevance boxes. So those customers that haven't used symptom-driven diagnostics before, these boxes are how relevant these faults are to the symptom that we've selected. So we've told the particular vehicle that we have an emissions issue. So we've selected the powertrain, the engine and the emissions. So what it's doing now is it's checking those DTCs, it's checking the, those DTCs for how relevant they are to our symptom. So you can see that the O2 sensor bank one, sensor one, it's 66% relevant to our issue and our problem. Also, but further down, it's also 100% relevant on this particular fault. So the P0030 
it's 100% relevant where the P2231 code is 66. Now, with the little signpost that we get here now, these little signposts now means that we have specific recommendations for these individual faults. So can when I, we can I just point something out as well? So we've got the occurrence at the top of the screen here in the kilometres when these faults have actually reoccurred and occurred up here. Yeah, so these are your well, event timelines, event yeah. Event timelines are already on there as yeah, well. So, so it's telling us it's happened at um, 20. Well, we can see here, we can see here, event two occurred at the 28.638 mile. And then obviously you've got event one here that have, uh, occurred at between 28.635 yeah. to 28. Yeah. So you can see we've got this timeline here. Now, again, the software is very user friendly. We can, we, there are a number of different ways we can view these. We can view them by the event timeline. We can actually click here and view them alphabetically by fault code or we can decide to view them by ECU groups. So if we're interested in just the engine ECU, we can now filter those to just the faults within the engine ECU. It's got the same percentages there. Same percentages, well. same information yeah. relayed, but just a different format of viewing. So what's your next step then? So the next step is we're gonna look at the guided diagnostics or what the software is suggesting that we do, the recommendations specifically for these fault codes. So we can do that by clicking the signpost. And you can see across the top now, the recommendations is it's now filtered by that specific fault code, the P2231. So what it's saying is for that particular fault code, what it would like us to do is it would like us to read the TSB bulletin. We've done that previously, which relates to the change of components as well as the software update. So after we've read our TSB bulletin, we would then configure existing module, which is the engine ECU. As you can see, we have already performed that. And then the second stage is that on this particular fault would be to read the special service message. Now, if we, if we filter that, we go back into our DTCs and we look at an additional O2 sensor, so the one that's 100% relevant. When we look at this particular one, it's giving us slightly different recommendations. So now it's telling us to do some pinpoint tests to check bank one, sensor one, wiring and integrity. So that'd be our next plan of attack would be to get the pinpoint test, physically go through the wiring diagram and check the, this particular sensor before we condemn the sensor and replace it. Okay, thanks Dave.